Let me just start by going just slightly a little bit back in time, um, just to kind of give you a sense of the origins of this project that we've undertaken Rural South. Um, I discovered I wanted to, to be this thing called a documentary filmmaker when I was in college at University of Michigan, and I moved to the Bay Area, um, to the San Francisco Bay Area, because about half of the films that, that, that I had just kind of been immersed in uh, in college, I couldn't help but notice, were made by this vanguard of documentary filmmakers out in the Bay Area. Um, I did a lot of, I did so many internships, I can't even count them when I got out there, um, and ended up, you know, uh, working in the field. Um, but one of the things that I did, one of the most rewarding things that I did, was I launched a documentary series um, for the PBS station KQED, which is in, in San Francisco, and it was called Truly California. And, um, you know, the Bay Area has an incredible community of documentary filmmakers, uh, all of, you know, up and down the state of California. And I, and I noticed there were a lot, you know, at the time, um, you know, POV and Independent Lens, you know, if you added it up together, maybe it was like 30 slots a year. Um, so there were so many films that weren't, that really incredible films, very worthy films, that weren't finding uh, distribution across public media. And so the idea behind Truly California was to um, pick up films that were really late in their post-production you know, uh, process um, and help them with the most expensive part of the, of the process, which is their online edit, their sound mix, um, and, and then give them distribution on, on public television. And it was incredible um, to work really closely with the filmmakers on Truly California on finding the films. Um, it was interesting because, you know, I would watch a rough cut or a fine cut or a festival version that would have some ideas of how we might be able to polish it up and put it on television. And um, but I was really careful because I thought, are the filmmakers going to want, you know, this kind of feedback? And it turns out that people were hungry, absolutely hungry to uh, have a, a partner, a collaborative partner, somebody to help um, bring out the best in the film um, uh, at that part of their distribution journey. Um, so I did that for four years. I was the creator and the, and the series producer of Truly California. I was a trailing spouse. My husband got a job out here in North Carolina and we moved this way. I am a southerner. Um, so I guess you could say I was in exile out in, <laughs> on the west coast and then I was coming home. And I didn't really know much about the documentary uh, filmmaking scene here. And when I moved here, and I was just thrilled to discover uh, what talented storytellers were here, um, the festivals that were here. Um, and, but again, you know, looking around and thinking, wow, there are a lot of Southern documentaries that aren't um, getting out there as widely as they should, uh, particularly in public media. Um, this was again about, you know, when we first started thinking about it about five or six years ago. And, you know, Honey Boo Boo was on television, Duck Dynasty. <laughs> and so um, what was getting out there, we didn't feel was particularly authentic or interesting. Um, and so, you know, we started to think, well, if we could have a documentary series, uh, it could be an amazing counter to this kind of exploitation that was getting out there. Um, and just because we saw a dearth, um, you know, on some of the national strands of Southern storytelling. Um, so lo and behold, I uh, partnered up with a, a colleague of mine named Amy Shoemaker, who uh, worked for many, many years at South Carolina ETV, which is the PBS network, statewide network in South Carolina. And she had done something similar to me with Truly California, what I did out at, at KQED in San Francisco. She had run um, a popular documentary series uh, in South Carolina called Southern Lens. Had, had anybody ever seen or heard of Southern Lens? Um, and, uh, you know, I think it had kind of run out of steam. Stations sometimes, you know, priorities come and go, budgets can grow and shrink. And so it wasn't currently um, in production. And what we thought about was it, should we do something, instead of it being state specific, that if we did something that was more regional, um, one, we would get more great films, right? If we didn't limit ourselves just to the Carolinas or just to Georgia or just to, to Virginia or whatever, um, that we thought we would be able to draw from you know, the entire Southeast, we would have enough content to sustain uh, something more regular, something annual, um, and we would have a much bigger audience. Um, 
and just more freedom with the topics that we would be able to cover, the kind of stories, the regions, et cetera. So lo and behold, um, we came up with this idea of Real South. Um, at the time, I was running uh, a small uh, media arts nonprofit called the Southern Documentary Fund, which is, an, if, if you don't know about the Southern Documentary Fund, I encourage you to um, visit their website, check them out, sign up for their newsletter. They support documentary filmmakers all over the American South. Um, they have an annual artist convening, which is uh, coming up in late June, um, and they offer something called fiscal sponsorship to filmmakers who are out making films and needing to raise money. I'll leave the fiscal sponsorship conversation for someone else in another day, because it's a little complicated, but they're a fine organization supporting uh, filmmakers and storytellers all over the South. I was the executive director there. I was talking to Amy about doing Real South, and at the time, there was um, a change in leadership at UNCTV. Um, and an opportunity to just kind of launch something new while no one was really looking. <laughs> so we partnered up with them um, and uh, decided not to um, go into development and try to raise money for it, which could take months if not years, but we just said, we know about a handful of films that are just ripe for national distribution. They're at the, they're at the perfect time, they're the perfect themes and, and films that we think would resonate across the country. Let's just go and see if they'll do this grand experiment with us and let, let us license the film uh, for, and you know, we didn't, we didn't uh, pay anything that first pilot season. And we collected six films and we, we, we packaged them, put them together, and we went to um, the PBS distributors called NIDA, which are based in South Carolina. They distribute PBS content to stations across the system. And uh, we decided to put it out there. In our first season, we got over uh, almost 80% carriage across the entire country. The series was shown everywhere from Oregon to Chicago and then all over the Southeast. And we just thought, wow, okay, this is, this is resonating. <coughs> People, program, the PBS programmers wanted to, to put it on their stations. We were hearing back from audiences. We were getting a lot of, of positive feedback. And, um, and then we were lucky enough to get some actual real funding for our second season from the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. So then we were off and running. So that kind of brings us slightly up to date as we uh, are premiering literally last night, uh, or the, I guess Wednesday night officially, uh, and last night here in North Carolina, uh, premiering our fourth season of, of Real South. We've got nine new films that are coming out, again, across on PBS stations across the country. Um, you can also see all of them at uh, realsouth.org or on the PBS app. Um, I'm very into people having access to our films online um, and being able to watch them wherever they are um, and whatever device they're watching on. And uh, it has been, uh, I think we're up to over 50 films. I haven't done counting the new season. I need to do my math. I need to, to get the new, the, new head, the new kind of head count here of what we're up to, but, um, and then we've started adding something into it, which is digital shorts. Um, so as it was talked about, we are here uh, at River Run to give out what we call the Real South Short Award. And what we do is we partner with Southern Film Festivals and we uh, give out a cash prize for the best documentary short, 15 minutes or less. Um, and what we do is we work with the filmmakers to uh, give us the streaming rights to the film, not exclusive streaming rights, so we can do the digital distribution. Um, and we actually have distributed a lot of student work, so it was really exciting to be here today for the student pitches. Um, we've had a number of um, pieces from Wake Forest, um, who's in the house here, yes, um, and in other uh, programs. Um, I'm not sure if we've done anything from Elon yet, but we, you know, um, What's great about partnering with the regional Southern Film Festivals, and I'll tell you the ones that we're partnered up with, River Run, obviously, um, but we also work with uh, the Hot Springs Documentary Film Festival, with the New Orleans Film Festival, the Sidewalk Film Festival in Birmingham. Um, we're gonna be going to Indy Memphis for the first time in November, um, the Indy Memphis Film Festival, and I'm probably forgetting a couple here. Um, we try to have, our goal is to have a festival in all of the states that we cover on Real South. So we're still looking for one in Texas and Kentucky. Um, but what's great is that um, what we find is that through the Real, the Real South Short Award One, it allows us to have a steady stream of content year round. 
So we're not just uh, releasing a broadcast slate once a year of 10 to 12 films, but we get to have these gem, these, these short little gems that are released online every month. But also the work is um, oftentimes a little edgier, uh, made by younger makers, uh, sometimes more diverse than, than, than the feature films that we're getting. And, and all of that is very important to us uh, as a series. And so it's something that we're, that we're really excited about. And we're starting to think about um, bundling up some of these shorts into um, uh, broadcast half hours or hours and putting them out on the World Channel, which is another um, PBS channel that uh, many stations across the, the country uh, carry. So they could actually go beyond digital distribution and actually become broadcast as well.